patriotic crowd. And before the competition, nobody could predict who would be the gold medal winner, just as is the case today with the ladies' championship. So they'll be going all out just as the men did last night. All right. First, then, is going to be a look back at last night's sensational men's final. And then it's on to the world championship for the ladies when CTV returns to the... Tracy Wayman at this moment is tied for ninth. She did not have a good practice, did not have a good warm-up. That's what she did in Halifax, and she came through. And our fingers are crossed that this young lady can pull it off again here tonight in her second appearance at the World Championship. And we'll soon know, John, because her first jump is a double lutz jump. She should have no difficulty with that one, but the next one is a triple Southall, a very difficult jump for anybody. Well done, well done. Now the jump she's been having problems with in practice and warm-ups is a double axel. She fell on it in the short program, but she has two of them planned in a row right here. There's a first one. And she wisely decided to take the other one out, which will not harm her. Good. Good move. Another double axle. Oh, that was the one she was having problems with. She landed the first one. She missed that one, unfortunately. She has an option to throw the double axle in here one more time. I just hope. Oh, didn't quite get around it. It almost looked as though she decided to change her mind as she was taking off. Fortunately, she was able to hold her edges, and Tracy Wayman gets a standing ovation on another solid crowd of 15,000 here at Hartford. And John, that double axle was the only one that she had difficulty in with practice and in the program. The more difficult jumps like this one, a triple sock out, she had absolutely no problem for a 13-year-old, for anybody to be able to do that is just outstanding. 
Let's see what happened with the double axel jump. She did have trouble in the warm-up with it. It looked like the timing is just rushed. There's the first one that was a very good double axel in the program. She wisely there, Debbie, uh, left out the second double axel because she knew very well she was having problems with the double axles in practice and in warm-up. Well, Tracy is going to take a long time to get back to the... Um position where they can uh, shoot the marks over her. She's getting so many uh, flowers from this adoring audience here. These marks are for technical merit. Five, three, five, four, five, four, five, 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 four, five, three, five, two, and two, five, three. Well, you know, for a 13-year-old, I can tell you it's very lonely when you're out there in the middle of the ice, no matter how old you are, skating in front of 15,000 people and millions on television, watching Tracy Wayman of Canada from all around the world. And she's so reachable, this child. You talk to her, it's like talking to an adult. There are the second set of marks, and this is for artistic impression ranging from 5.2 up to a 5.6 for Tracy Wayneman. One of the greatest athletes of all time was looking on tonight and applauding as a young athlete, 13 years of age, was trying to achieve what Gordie Howe achieved at 17 years of age. Tracy Wayneman had a great night out there tonight. Tracy, this is your second world championship. Did it feel any different, any better, any worse, any more relaxed than the first time out? Um, it almost felt the same. I, each time that I go out, I try to do my best so I don't get any more nervous any, uh, any time. Were you worried about those double axles? We saw you were having problems with them in warm-up and in practice this um, afternoon. I wasn't worried, really. <laughs> I just, I don't know what happened. Tracy, when you come to the World Championships, do you come away feeling you've learned something from it? Uh-huh, I've learned a lot. Like, what sort of things? Um... Well, through my short program, I have to get more consistent, and I just seeing everybody skate and seeing everybody else, you know, what they do and what their jumps are, and we learn a lot. What was your target, to make the top ten? Yep. Well, look at that monitor over there right now. You are automatically in the top ten at this point. <laughs> Now, let's take a look at that opening. That was a beautiful opening, and we looked like uh, you had forgotten everything you'd done wrong in practice and done yeah. it right here. <laughs> Tracy, a good move was that you, after you completed that double axle, you left out the second one, which didn't count against you. Uh, did, uh -huh. When did you decide to do that? Um, well, the first one, I felt like I was going a bit slow, so I just decided to get into the spin and just forget about the second one. <laughs> when you're training, do you have sort of fail-safe plans in case something goes wrong, you know, well, you'll do a spin there instead of a jump? Um, not really, just usually out there, you know, you can feel what to do. So you have to be a fast thinker. Yeah. How many hours do you train a day, regularly? Well, for this, usually I don't train as much, but for this, I was skating four to five hours a day, six days a week. <laughs> you must feel two feet <laughs> higher after this <laughs> performance. <laughs> Tracy, the whole of Canada was looking on with a great deal of pride, and of course we were delighted to be here to watch you in your second world championship, and uh, you've made the top ten, and now it's just a question of, of clawing your way to that podium, and hopefully that'll come along real soon. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Seventeen-year-old Debbie Cottrell, a three times champion of Great Britain, and at this point in the competition, Debbie is in fourth position. She was a very strong second after the compulsory figures, but she had her problems in a short program, finishing eight, and thus now fourth overall. She had no problem with that first triple jump, but she prepares now for her second triple jump.
beautiful interpretation of that music. Here's a double axle. She's got about a minute left. She has excellent footwork between jumps as she prepares for two double loops. in it, she skated a very strong performance in fourth position going into this final. Well, the British gang over here came looking for medals. They feel that they could win uh, the dance. They thought they had a bit of a chance for at least a bronze with Debbie, and that hasn't diminished at all. Well, she really packed the jumps in. This triple loop jump was one of the very few successful ones done in the entire competition, the men and women combined. She had lovely height on it, very nice presentation with the body, good stretch through on the landing. I think it's one of the, I think it's one of the nicest programs that Deborah Cottrell of Great Britain has ever skated. Both the jumps, the footwork, the interpretation, and the spins. Here we have another look at the camel spin as she changes to a sit spin. Now watch her change feet again, change to another position, a back sit spin. She just went on to skate a beautiful performance as we'll now wait and see what the judges thought of it. For the march to come up, and this will be for technical merit. She's in fourth place, and we'll see what the top range here is those five sixes it's the positions that you win with those judges that determine whether you're going to move or not so she has those fours fives and sixes with a 5.3 thrown in well she certainly has the technical content i think um we'll see perhaps a little bit lower here on the artistic impression mark wrong 5.2 in the low mark ranging up to a 5.7 Figure Skating Championships will continue. This is a new young skater arriving on the scene from East Germany, Carola Paul. Good young skater who finished uh, second in the East German Championships this year, and thus a trip to the world. Now, Annette Butch, of course, the defending champion, has retired. So that meant rather than being able to send five, they were able to send only two. There are two competitors to the championship, uh, though they could have had three because of the top five finish. Both the East German girls here, Carola and Katharina Witt, who you will see later, have a great deal of appeal. They skate with a very showy style. that the U East Europeans were always ahead in compulsory figures and dropped back in free skating. Not anymore, because this young girl from East Germany was 16th after compulsory figures. She placed seventh in the short program and is skating a very strong free skating final right now.
young ladies putting so much difficult footwork between jumps and moves rather than just stroking from one jump to the next. skater from East Germany, Carola Paul. And she certainly started off her performance very well because she, instead of warming up as some of the other skaters do with a single jump or a double jump, she decided to do a triple flip jump right off the bat. Watch her put her toe in, get up in the air, three nice solid revolutions and a very clean back landing and on she went to skate a fairly decent program, Debbie. I agree, Otto. She has that kind of spunk that I really enjoy when I'm watching skating. She had fabulous jumping technique, but some of her spins were particularly pretty, too. This spin combination beginning with the camel spin. Nice arm variation. Back into a layback spin or a side back. And then change of foot and into a back sit spin. Carla Paul is in 13th place at the moment, and we can see she's going to move uh, a little bit because she's got a good range of five fives up there from that one 5.3, and that's for technical merit. The judges seem to be a little bit inconsistent in their choice of marking for the technical merit mark. I don't know what you have to do these days. <laughs> Now for artistic impression, the marks range from 5.2 to 5.5. The champion of the United States, Elaine Zayak from New Jersey. She is in fifth place at the moment. And John, she has a jam-packed beginning to her program. She starts off right away with a double lutz jump into a triple toe. Let's watch for it right here. Double lutz, triple toe. is a girl that could fight her way right to the top. Double axle. Second double axle. She could be closer to the top at this point had she not had a fall during the short program on the flying fifth spin. They get to a triple sow bow. She always does everything in combinations and she's skating beautifully. She could go all the way to the top. But that's nothing new for this young 15 year old in uh, four different major championships in 1979 and won them all, including the Prague Skate. This year, she won Skate Canada after finishing 11th in the world, and then she won the U.S. National Championship, succeeding Linda Fradiani. Seems to do everything with such ease and grace. Here's the combination of spirals moving straight into a triple loop jump. She had a little difficulty there. You saw her put her foot down. Move after West 
German skater Ina Bauer. Right into a triple southbow and then a beautiful layback spin. the opportunity to present um, all of the skaters for you but as a result of Karen Reidinger's move from West Germany she has now jumped three places and as a result Tracy Wayneman looks like she's gonna have to be settling for 11th place now that it's not over yet there's still five skaters to go and uh, she could move back into 10th but at this point it looks like 11. Right now we're watching Elaine Zayak from the United States, and again she has a good combination coming up here. Split jump, triple toe loop. The hips are beginning to get a little saggy, I think just through exhaustion. In order to land properly, they must be tucked firmly underneath her. This is her last combination of jumps, ending with yet another triple jump, and a flying camel into a back spin and a final very fast scratch spin by Elaine Zayak of the United States. What a year this is for the United States. And Santee and Hamilton finishing uh, first and second, that is uh, Hamilton first, Santee second. And now Elaine Zayak has 15,000 people standing Half of them are trying to rush down to the boards with loads of flowers in their hands. We could be here all night with this one. Well, watch the double luck triple toe jump combination at the beginning of the program. She does the triples with such ease. There's no preparation for them, no setup. She just bams it right through. And I think that's one of the reasons why they're so effective and so well done. That's right, Debbie. And as I said in the program, she never did a jump on its own. She always combined it with another jump or a combination of jumps or moves such as this one right here. This is the Ina Bauer move, and she steps right out of that move straight into a triple saga, a very difficult jump on its own. But she always combined it, and I think that you're, as a result, you're going to see very high marks because she never stopped. Even out of that triple saga, she goes straight into this beautiful layback spin. This could be one of the real moves in uh, any world championship competition because remember she was seventh after compulsory figures. That's a long way back to be at at any point in time challenging for top spot. Mathematically it's possible. She came in third in short program which put her in total overall position of fifth after uh, the compulsory in short in this, of course, accounts for 50% of the total mark. So these marks are of utmost importance. This is Elaine Zayak now watches her first set of marks. Oh, and they are loaded. 5'9", 258, 5'7", 5'8", 5'9", and 2'5", And John, she certainly deserved it because she had that jam-packed program from the beginning double X triple toe right through with all the combinations and beautiful skating. And she's learning, too, as she matures to combine the artistic side of figure skating. She isn't just a gazelle jumping, but she's beginning now to show some of that artistry. And look at artistic impression now. They range from 255 up to 358 for Lane Zayak in the United States. World Figure Skating Championships will continue in just a moment. Skater who has been a competitor since 1976 is Claudia Christophic Binder from Vienna. She is in first place at this moment. However, that was as a result of a strong first place finish in the compulsory figures. And then she dropped back to sixth place in the short program. What has just happened here is the fact that because uh, Kira Ivanova did not skate that well, that meant she dropped back, and that therefore puts Tracy Weinman back up into the top ten. We've been speaking earlier in the program about wrapped free legs, and Claudia Binder certainly has one in her jumping technique. It makes it very difficult for the skater to check out of the jump well to land on balance with good speed.
probably the tallest skater here at uh, five foot seven. And I can remember her international debut in the Olympics in Innsbruck, where she finished 14th. pressure on Claudia. She saw Elaine Dyack skate and get the five nines near perfect mark. She is in first place. She knows she has to skate all out to try to hold that position. This is not at all unlike uh, Dietrich Schuba from Austria who it figures better than anybody else in the world and would always wind up fighting for that top spot because of the strength of figures and then the cautious short and long programs that didn't have any mistakes in them but they weren't they weren't difficult well claudia certainly has many more difficult jumps than many of the girl skaters but when you're competing against someone like Dyak who has triple everything and bielman as well You've got to have them. He just doesn't have the variety yet. This is her wrap-up. She's moving into a triple talk out here with a combination. She decided to do a double. Bender of Austria competing in her sixth world championship. She has been champion of Austria for six straight years. And each time she's had to do the same thing, try to protect a first or an early lead after compulsory figures. And I don't think they'll mark her quite that high in this occasion either. Sean, if she wanted to hold on to that lead, she would have had to include all the doubles and triples that she had planned in her program, and she did not. Instead of triples, we see her do doubles like she did right here, right at the end of the program. She had a combination of jumps which she left out, and to try to hold on to first position in a world championship, you can't leave those very important elements out of a program. It really is the courage with which a competitor attacks their program. Here we see the triple toe loop. A great deal of hesitation stepping into it. She's deciding, look at the leg way up there, the body falls forward. It does not count. Too bad. And as we wait for the march for Claudia, the current leader, just let me remind you that uh, Sunday night, CTV's award-winning W5 looks at women being trained for the space shuttle as well as a report on teenage mothers. That's CTV's W5 on Sunday night. So, one, I was going to say, uh, Otto, once again, we're held up because of the flowers, and, they, 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 and it, as well as setting attendance records here, they've set the records for the number of flowers being sold and thrown on the ice. First set of marks, and these range from a 5.3 up to a 5.6. This is very difficult because with the new marking system, it is the technical merit mark, the first mark, which determines the break in a tie. And if the skater must have a particular weight or a particular emphasis, it's in the technical area. Well, look at the range of artistic impression here from those two 5.7s down to a 5.3 for Claudia Christophic Binder of Austria, who is the leader at this moment. Another young lady who is competing in her sixth world championship. 18-year-old Denise Bielman from Switzerland with her world-famous move that uh, people have tried to copy, but nobody has ever really done it. Denise 
Gilman is in second place. She was fourth at the compulsory figure, second in the short program, and uh, looks like she can move right to the top here. So Denise is not only a beautiful skater, but a strong jumper, as you saw there, with her first elegantly executed triple top bow. just a difficult jump, but more important, I think, it was the classy way she performed the overall performance. But the difficult jumps count as well, and here we see Denise doing that triple up jump. The only one, although she had her foot wrapped around, she pulled out of it beautifully and skated one of the classier performances that I've ever seen. I agree, Otto. This Buhlman spin has become the Swiss, na Swiss national emblem, I'm sure, and every skater in the world tries it. Now watch, this was the spin from the middle of the program. She begins with the combination of the twist hanging onto the blade. The arm comes in, she pushes her head around to try to increase the rotation speed. Then up she goes, changes position once again, grabs the blade further, pulls it right up. 
And this is the part that no one else in the world can do. And A's Dillman now. Here's the technical merit. Five, seven, two, five, nine, to six, and eight, and eight, and nine, and two, five, eight. And John, I think you'll see even slightly higher merit for artistic impression because that's where she really shone. I agree, Otto. Even the stroking, just plain forward stroking or backwards, was done with such flair, such style. It meant as much to her during the program as every jump. And now, here we have a row of five nines. Look at them with two five eights thrown in. So Denise Billman looks like she'll be wearing a crown home this evening. She's German champion, an excellent skater, has a lot of uh, a lot of little doubles and triples that the most girls don't have. And also, John, a very elegant skater. The competition isn't over yet. This young girl won the short free skating program earlier in the week. Watch her build up for her first combination of jumps, a double up, triple toe loop. with a double axle, steps straight into it, right here, and back into a short spread eagle move, beautifully done. combination of triples into her final scratch spin. Adarina Witt from East Germany, and it would appear. The 
This young lady who finished 10th in the world last year could move up to win a medal here in 1981. She had planned in the program so many triples, and one of the most difficult and rarely seen anywhere in figure skating is the triple flip jump. Now, she approached it very cautiously, had some very good ones in practice this morning. The toe goes in, three rotations in the air. Now, she did pull a little bit with the hips on the landing. You see how the edge did not really flow smoothly out of the landing. Well, Katrina is certainly a classy skater, whether it's in her jumps, her, particularly her interpretation of the music, and her spins. Here we see her going into the flying camel spin, nice control, nice extensions, and then she has a couple of illusions right here, and went on to hold her blade uh, as well, I think, Debbie, in the program. This is the flying camel spin where she did hold her blade. This is one of the type of spins that is inspired by the Bielman spin. For technical merit are... And the marks for technical merit range from a 5.5 to a 5.8. Let me remind you that Super CTV Sports coverage of PGA Golf continues with the Tournament of Players on March 22nd and the Heritage Golf Classic on March 29th. Two great Sundays of sports coverage. And when you're with CTV Sports, you see it all. Here comes the second set of marks. This is for artistic impression, and it ranges from 5.6 to a 5.8. And still with a mathematical chance to win it all is our final skater, Christina Wigelius from Finland. Bielman is still first, Elaine Zayak is second, Kristofik Binder is third. Witt has moved up into fifth place at this point from sixth. Double axle, second one right here. Christina Wigelis from Finland, currently in third. Christina is an example of one of the most difficult political things in figure skating. If you do not make an impression on the judges in the first year or the first two years that you're in the World Championship, it's almost impossible to make it to the very, very top. She's a very good skater, good triple jump very pleasing, but has had a reputation of not being a great free skater. That ball occurring in a triple south aisle, and that's just what you were talking about, Debbie. trailing with Carlo Fassi in Denver.
And John, this is her last combination approaching the end of her four-minute program. Well, she would have had to make a move to go the end of that medal class because she was third, but it almost seemed like she tried to try to sit it within herself. Wasn't explosive at all. Um, she did play it kind of safe, John. I agree with you. And she does not have the technical components of the program that are so very, very important in this day. The double axle at the beginning of the program was very nicely done. She has good height and lovely rotation, and she has a very mature style, very ladylike. Nicely done there. But the triple... Well, you gotta have them. That's right, Debbie. You have to, in a world championship, have everything in there. Uh, here we see Christina doing the second double axle, but it's the triples that count as well as the overall program. And here we see Christina trying that triple Salkow jump. Something went wrong right from the, uh, from the takeoff. She obviously didn't get around those required three turns, and down she went. Christina, as we saw her in, in Skate Canada, and as a matter of fact, uh, in 1978, when she did compete in Skate Canada, she finished third, and that has been her best international performance. Actually, the only championship she's won was, was, was the national championship of Finland, but internationally, Skate Canada's third place finish was her best. Well, I think she'd need marks from uh, over 5.5 in order to stay in third place. And here, as we see her first set of marks, that's not to be the case. It's technical merit, and it ranges from 5.2 to a series of 5.4s. That's, that's going to be difficult to hold that, that third, third place position, as you suggest, Otto. Well, she, I think John is a little bit disappointed. Looks like her first real shot at being on the podium. Well, we have two 5.6s uh, that either end of that scale, one in the middle, and they drop down to 5.3. So that's what happens for Christina Wigelius from Finland. Championship. First of all, how about the ladies? Oh, very good. Much better, actually, than the girls have been practicing all week. So it turned out quite good, especially, I think, to the winner, Denise Gilman. Uh, congratulations, she skated extremely well. And, of course, Tracy finally made the objective here. Yes, <laughs> Tracy's had a little little hard week here. She's had a little difficulty in practices. Uh, I think that she carried a very heavy burden this year, knowing what was expected of her, but in the end, she did it, and that's all that matters. As president of the CFSA, Dave, what are your immediate objectives for Canadian figure skating? Well, obviously, our immediate objectives are to get on the podium, and we're heading for the year 1984. And we said several years ago in our building program that the start of this or we start to see the results in 1981 and we're right on schedule as you can see the young boy orser has done very well popping into the sixth place it's just amazing and not taking away from brian Polkar because he did an excellent job the, the men's competition the pairs came back from a little disaster but with a a tremendous <laughs> tremendous performance and young tracy she did the task now what is it how are we going to try to help skaters we have to help our young skaters how are we going to do this well we need money <laughs> These youngsters, uh, as you know, it's anywhere from ten to $20,000 a year to maintain this level. Uh, we need this, but I think, more importantly, we need the support. And I might say, uh, while anyone is listening, these youngsters have received over 300 telegrams this week from the Canadian people, um, among them Premier Davis of Ontario and um, Joe Regan, the Minister of Sport, who said that, to quote his telegram, he said that at the end of this competition, he's sure that the Canadians will again be in the forefront of skating, and we're here. Okay, thank you very much, Dave, and uh, good luck as you put together that okay. CFSA program. Thanks a lot. And so Denise Billman taking one step at a time, six trips to the World Championship, has finally made it to the top of that ladder. Denise Billman, the 1981 ladies' champion. Helene Zayak moving all the way from fifth to second place to win a silver medal for the United States. And Claudia Christophic Binder has won the bronze. Deborah Cottrell of Great Britain, fourth. Katarina Witt of East Germany is fifth. Christina Wigail is of Finland in sixth place. And Canada's Tracy Wayneman coming to the championships, hoping to make the top ten, has achieved that objective. That's the story then in the ladies' final. This is Johnny Esau with Debbie Wilkes and Otto Jelenik inviting you to join us later on tonight for the Dance Championship of the World.